I'm Doug Shear, lead of the Birdcliff Forum Committee. I'm happy to invite you to join us in welcoming a true Woodstock master, artist Hangyan Zhang, and his interviewer, gallerist James Cox. We're recording this Zoom event and it will be uploaded to the Woodstock Birdcliff Guild's YouTube channel in a few days. Please note that comments made by the two speakers and by anyone submitting questions or comments are those of the speakers or posters and not those of Birdcliff. To submit your question or comment, use the chat function that you'll find at the bottom of your Zoom screen. And Jim will select some and read them to Hang Yen for his comment. Mm. You may post your name if you wish. James Cox met Hang Yen Zhang when he was executive director of the Grand Central Art Galleries in New York City. Cox then moved upstate where he opened the James Cox Gallery in Woodstock. Cox has served on the boards of the New York Academy of Art, Grand Central Art Galleries, Educational Association, and the Dorsky Museum of Art at the State University in New Paltz. He is a member of the International Association of Fine Art Appraisers, the Auctioneers Association of New York, and the International Foundation for Art Research. He has edited numerous art publications, including Tonalism in American Experience, Impressionism, Post-Impressionism, Transformation in the Modern American Mode, La Femme, The Influence of Whistler, and the Japanese Print Masters on American Art, and more. He has organized over 170 exhibitions of American contemporary and historical art at the Grand Central Art Galleries in New York, the James Cox Gallery in Woodstock, Phoenix Art Museum, Brooks Memorial Academy, the Heckscher Museum, and the Provincetown Art Association Museum. Jim. Yes. Thank you very much, Doug. <clears throat> it's a real pleasure to be here. And I want to congratulate the Woodstock uh, Birdcliff Guild for taking on this, this valuable project. It's a real honor to be able to um, introduce, actually, uh, a great friend and a, and a great artist, Zhang Hongyan. I thought it would be interesting for you to hear a little bit about how we met. Uh, the circumstances are reflective of the times and uh, uh, the art world in America uh, at that time. But I want to go back to uh, 19, I believe it was 1985. Hongyan can, can correct me correct. if I'm wrong. Okay. And um, a friend of mine uh, actually owned a foundry in uh, uh, Astoria, Queens. I was having a work of bronze uh, cast in that foundry, and I was there visiting one day, and he was taking me on a tour through the various projects they had uh, 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 underway at the foundry, and I came upon a most unusual motif, let's call it. I saw a Chinese man uh, working meticulously with uh, almost surgical or jeweler's tools on a small reproduction, no more, I'm gonna say 10 inches high, 12 inches high of the Statue of Liberty. And uh, of course I was captured by the, the irony and the interest, I was interested immediately. And I went up and started to look at the incredibly fine work that this uh, Chinese gentleman was doing on this clay sculpture. My friend who owned the foundry explained to me that they had received a commission from the um, Statue of Liberty Commission, actually, which would be celebrating the 100th anniversary of the erection of the Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor about a year from now. And they were commissioned to, be, to, to make a replica or a, a small a, a scale edition of the Statue of Liberty to give out to the major donors to the restoration campaign. And I just thought it was so interesting that the person doing the actual work was 
a Chinese man, possibly, and I didn't know any of his background, an immigrant. And uh, the, it was very poignant to me. But most of all, I was incredibly impressed by the surgical, the masterly, masterly work that was being done on this Statue of Liberty. And by the way, I just want to add that I actually believe that every one of those uh, Statue of Liberty replicas and plastic souvenirs that you see in Times Square and sold all over New York City is probably one way or another a knockoff of this man's original work that he was doing that day. So we did that usual thing of back and forth, uh, my appreciating, my ooing and eyeing and so on. He didn't speak any English. But just before I left, I uh, uh, took out my business card and I put it on the platform where he was working. His name was Wan Jida. And uh, I was back in my office of, and, and at the gallery on 57th Street. About a week later, uh, someone called me from the front desk and said that we had some visitors. And I went out to the front desk and there were five Chinese artists all standing there, including Wang Ji Da, who had done the uh, Statue of Liberty uh, reproduction that I had told you about. Also were classmates of his from the Central Academy of Fine Art in Beijing. And it included four other absolutely top uh, flight artists who had been invited to come to the United States during the Chou and Lai uh, regime and um, Zhang Hunyan was one of them. That's how we met that day. And um, I'd like to say the rest is history, but I would also uh, venture to say that Hunyan and I, and actually all five of the artists, became very, very close friends from that point. Um, I spent quite a bit of time, I mean an enormous amount of time actually with all of them, because I was so fascinated by what kind of artwork they did went completely against everything I had ever understood that, of the kind of art that was being produced in China. It was academically solid. It was incredibly facile and well done. And uh, I was immediately intrigued by how all of this occurred. Um, so Hon Yen, being actually the person who turned out to be my closest friend, began to describe to me the journey where it started in Beijing at the actually almost high school of the, of the National Academy in uh, Beijing. And uh, the story, be, I would say, begins there. So I would like at this point uh, to introduce my good friend and a stunningly great artist, Zhang Honyan. Are you able to come on with us now? Uh, here I am, yeah. Uh, good, good, good. Yeah, thanks, James. And uh, thanks to the Bird Class community. And uh, I am in Woodstock uh, already um, about 30 years, but a long start began earlier uh, in America. It's from James Cox, uh, the gallery, Grand Central Gallery. But uh, sometime when I have the opportunity to uh, talk about uh, my long journey, I will be back even earlier. And uh, James, there's a photo you can show people the one when I was 15. Yeah, when I was 15 years old, I'm in, get into the Beijing Art Academy Art High School. Central, the, cent, uh, Central yeah, Central Art uh, uh, Academy. That's the best uh, art academy in China. And the high school is very difficult, very high selected. But I got in and very happy. But from the photo, you can see very innocent. And I just love art. I have nothing but just about the 10. But the one thing serious is in China, when you involve the that school, that means you choose your career. You're not, you will not have a chance to be doctor not have the chance to be engineer, your all life will be artist and make that mind in that age. And uh, we studied very well because the system is so good. But uh, unfortunately, and four years later, it's a cultural revolution. And uh, we was sent to the countryside 
did the hard labor, and you can compare the two photos. This sure is about 10 years apart. I'm getting older, but more important, I'm really getting changed. I'm getting stronger, but also I have a more independent idea for art. Would you like to show us some of your earliest work at that time, Hunyan? Yeah, I think that Judy has that. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Oh, this is very interesting. Why I say that the hard life for me in the Cultural Revolution during the time of when we were sent to the country for re-education, that actually is a hard labor and by the way, don't even have a freedom to paint. We cannot read, we cannot uh, study art, but we are all art students, around 100 there. So we sneak out and those painting not, uh, in, not uh, as bigger as uh, five by seven, but we sneak out to do those painting. But that actually make me feel I love art even more because uh, it's about getting there. Yeah, the next. Let's move on to the next, um, there we go, good. Yeah, year, uh, years, four years, I was in the hard labor camp. And uh, back, finally, I back to Beijing. I was so selected into Beijing Art Academy as an artist uh, uh, in residence. So by that time, I have more a peaceful life. And, and I have my baby, and that's the portrait I did of my wife, Yixin. So I want to just make sure that people see this and understand. This is your wife my, in Beijing. My wife, your, now I can call it my late wife, yeah. Yes, your late wife and your, your uh, daughter and your daughter late wife on, on the bed there at that yeah. time. That's uh, our family. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, would you like to move on to the next uh, painting, which was really... Yeah. Um, I'll let you explain it. Thank you. Yeah, that's the painting called Before the Long March. This is what I was doing when I was in the Beijing Art Academy as an artist. So I can do something for the show like this one. It's 1977. There's a big show for uh, memory of uh, three uh, leaders in China, Mao and Zhou Enlai and Zhu De. They are same year in 1976, they died. So this next year, the, the big show, I did the painting for the show. I was it, 29. It's a heroic painting. And to my eye, even then, when I first saw this image, it reminded me of actually another, uh, let me call it cultural uh, tradition, which looks okay. Russian to me and did uh -huh. it that Time, and I thought maybe you'd explain a little bit of why it does have that appearance. And uh, yeah, those uh, influence uh, uh, from uh, Russia, uh, a lot uh, is the historical quality and uh, also the, uh, uh, the heroic, romantic for revolution. That influence is pretty strong, yes. Do I, am I, is my memory right that you actually had some instructors that came from Russia? Uh, yes, uh, my teacher, several teachers studied in Russia. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Let's move on to the next image. Yeah, this painting is, uh, I did uh, the year 1976. That's uh, even now, today, I look at the painting, I feel so interesting to capture this uh, his historical moment. It's, uh, for me, it's in my lifetime, it's the fourth time to see Chinese people protest the uh, government because uh, by that time, uh, Zhou Enlai died. He was uh, the uh, beloved leader, but uh, he was not the favorite for Gan of Force. This is why his death and the shock uh, Chinese people and uh, in Beijing and the millions of people come to the street to send uh, uh, like uh, see respect for his body to go to a funeral. And I did the painting, kind of like a protest painting. Yeah. Well, it's a major uh, effort as anyone can see. 
Um, I, I think it's interesting that even at this time when you were doing these, I'm going to call them official paintings, yeah. uh, you were also interested in, in artwork in a very private way. And I'd like to bring up the next image to and let you explain that piece. Oh, this painting, yeah, people could be shocked, but they don't know the background. Because uh, you during the Cultural Revolution, people getting more and more uh, against and uh, feel tired for the Cultural Revolution, but uh, nobody dared to speak out. This woman is a very few British people can speak out, but uh, sure, she was uh, killed. And uh, so this painting I was uh, doing when I want to do the painting, I by accident actually created, by that time people called it the, the stream of unconsciousness because for my mind it's very sharp and very confused why those things happened. And this painting really uh, had a lot of people uh, have my, give me late send the letter and also this painting co collected by the National Gallery. I think that's amazing on every level, including the fact that this painting is in the National Gallery in Beijing, yeah. but it's so revolutionary, if I can use that word, uh, yeah. I, I could choose better words. It, it's an amazingly creative painting. I congratulate you on that. Let's yeah. move on to the next, which is a very much of a narrative painting. Yeah. This painting, remember I talked about uh, the education the uh, his historical big event because uh, all the Chinese young people was uh, sent to the countryside and it's the idea the government said that you all get a lot of wrong education from the school most of their capitalism and then now you are in the country through the hard labor you can learn come more communism and you will become a more pure communist but we actually learned it negatively. And so this is the painting I showed at the life. We're in the very small room and we're after one day hard labor, we're there and sleeping and reading later and eat egg, wash face and smoke, red dairy. So that painting actually to like a millstone in uh, Chinese art history. They named this kind of painting called the uh, scar art. Scar art means uh, you had the wonder, you have the pen, now the scar, but uh, you never forget them, yeah. I just want to re-emphasize what you just said. It's scar art, as in yeah. memory of, of, of hard, hard things that had happened in your life. It's, yeah. it's a very strong painting. And where is this today, Honyan? This painting is in National Gallery too. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Let's move on to the next image. Yeah. Yeah. Anya? Okay. This time I still in that period that we're talking about uh, what our young people's life during the Cultural Revolution. Like I said, we are all sent to the countryside. Everybody say goodbye to the family. Or basically, all the gener generation during the time where life is like a leaf on the and the, in the gun with the wind, put it that way. So I created this painting to show um, the, in the train, the young people see each other, but the light, the train take them to a different place. So this is why I named the car. It's uh, uh, on the train of the dead, uh, dynasty, uh, destiny, yeah. Train of destiny. Yeah. And your destiny carried you forward. I'd like to bring up the next image, if you don't mind. Uh, it's very, very personal, and you can explain that for us. Yeah, this is the time uh, after uh, we married, and I have the new uh, baby, and I was uh, holding my baby and thinking about my mother holding me, and I think our family. I really think a lot about the source of the life. Yeah, that's the cause of the, the thinking about the source. Well, and I would just like to explain to our viewers, uh, this baby now lives uh, just in Red Hook over on the other side of the uh, river, 
Uh, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> takes very good care of Hun Yen's grandson. Yeah. Uh, but after that, let's move on to the next, which goes into a new phase of your work. Yeah. In the Beijing Art Academy, I like one thing they treat us. Always uh, like uh, give us the money to travel in China and uh, or in China, anywhere you want. Still, I take the opportunity, I go to the farthest place. I went to Tibet and I saw this thing. And that's so I, what I paint this for, nation, for the national show. Actually, this painting is collected by the National Gallery too. And uh, But the idea for the Tibetan life later turned to my major subject when I moved to America. I think it's very important to emphasize that this phase of your life where you were sponsored actually by the government, by the Central Academy, to travel and to document areas of China and, and beyond. Uh, and, and Tibet had a very, very special influence on your life. Let's move to the next image. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm a little out of sync, but I'll get back to what I was just saying. This yeah. actually is a, um, uh, I guess, a few pages out of a program, uh, a catalog that we did at Grand Central Art Galleries. Um, I think that the arrival of Hon Yen and his compatriots was such an important event in New York that everyone from the New York Times to the Wall Street Journal to television shows and so on and so forth covered this, but we needed something to emphasize uh, your arrival and the story. And so we produced a, a show and a catalog. And I guess this is, these are excerpts from uh, pages in that catalog. It was a very, very important event. And we featured, and I want to get back now to your Tibetan paintings. Right. And this painting, James, was in the Art News, the magazine. Yes, yes. That called the going to school. There you go. And now the next. Uh, this is a long, long thought of the youth. You know, the Tibetan, I was there spending time with them, living in their tent and uh, make a friends with their baby. And so I had strong feeling of the open and uh, endless world. Well, and, and your, 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 paint, your paintings provided us and the New York art public um, this, this fascinating view to a world that none of us had ever seen, Tibet. Uh, there's a wonderful painting that you did in this regard. Let's show it next. It's a, like, a, like a morning walking to the school. And uh, so, I just uh, love those kind of their uh, interesting children's life with uh, so, so new for me to see their heavy animal skin coat. And so their uh, village has uh, the uh, wooden uh, fence. Everything for me is new too. Yeah. Oh, it's, a, it's an amazing series. And I think the influence of Tibet stays with you today. But um, uh, in the meantime, you're in New York, you're living in New York, you were very successful, uh, not only at Grand Central Art Galleries, but also receiving some extremely important commissions. And um, at a certain point, um, I moved out of New York. And uh, uh, I think that uh, well, could go into a longer story, but we decided to move up to Woodstock uh, essentially together. And uh, let's bring up the next image. Yeah, this is my new Woodstock life. And the, my, for me, my reason to go Usta is my wife passed away and I want to bring my daughter to countryside, have a safe place to live. And I started teaching in Usta Art School. And meanwhile, I meet my future wife and uh, uh, Lois Woolley. She is a portrait painter. Yeah, that's the beginning of my new life. So the two of you are an extremely important part of this uh, art colony and of the Woodstock School of Art. 
And um, so your, your subjects began to change, but I, you incorporate also your family uh, into your, your artwork and uh, including your beautiful daughter, Renee. Let's show the next image. That's the painting actually I use my daughter to pose for me. Yeah, we call the uh, Magnolia. It's the base, uh, the background is in my yard. And then um, you continued uh, uh, along the way in your, in your work to doing these, um, I, I, I'm gonna call them monumental narrative paintings. Let's show the next one. Yeah, for me, I still continue the, uh, with the subject uh, I started in China and I developed in uh, Grand Central. And, uh, but I keep my another dream for me, art, it's a very serious mission. And I wanted to show how much love I have for the ordinary people and the respect that they're working. This is called the, uh, the kind of collecting the milk. Yeah, this is the dependent woman bring their milk to a tent where the manufacturing making the uh, powder, milk powder. So they're, when they're together, it's yes, for them, it's their holiday. It's a very, uh, they have a lot of fun talking, uh, laughing, and uh, I want to show this kind of life. And you do show it beautifully, Hunyan, and, and if you don't mind my pointing this out, the kind of milk it is, is yak milk, am I correct? Yes. yes. Milk, they, yes. They, they raise and milk their yaks. Yes. Yes. So let's move on to the next image of uh, also, I think it's Tibet. These yeah. amazing images. Yeah. So there, oh, actually, there is uh, two subjects that is re related. That's those women, when they collect their milk in their container, they walk miles and miles from the different uh, direction to the place, to, to the manufacturing. But for me, it's uh, so heroic, you know, on the highland, that's kind of club, and they're working heavy, but uh, they are very brave, brave people, hard life, yeah. Incredible. Well, um, in the work that you've, that you've done and, and, and pieces that are in museums in China, you oftentimes commemorated major events, major political or historical events, uh, uh, both in China and on the Silk Road and in Tibet. Uh, but back to the United States, I'd like to, you to bring up a, a, the next image and talk about a major event here in New York City. Right. This uh, actually is happened in the same week, 9-11, uh, 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 no, I mean July, no, no, 9-11, right? Like, well, ground zero. Yeah, I call ground zero. Because uh, when that thing happened, uh, I was uh, uh, in the studio. Uh, Lois' uh, daughter called us and said, Mom, and uh, Hunia, you must go to see the TV, see what happened. So we really watched the two uh, the twin tower and the falling part on the ground and the really broken heart. And uh, I couldn't really see anything for out of three days and I want to see what happened next. And then I told myself, why just do a painting? So in that kind of strong sadness, scared and uh, peace for the dead people, I want to do the painting. I did this painting, yeah. And I think this painting has been reproduced now, Hon Yan, and I see it actually all over. Yeah. Uh, it's an iconic painting that you did of this major event that affected us all. Yeah. Uh, during, during this time, mm -hmm. um, you were receiving, and I'm talking about uh, not just in New York and not these first years, but you were receiving a lot of uh, attention from uh, journalists and art publications. And uh, I know that one of them that picked up on your unique talent and, and, and vision was Artist Magazine. And they did a feature story on you and it's a, so yeah, interesting. Uh, Excuse me. And so it's so interesting how these things, one thing leads to another. 
Artist Magazine uh, reproduced some of your uh, monumental paintings and uh, it caught the attention of a, a, a more than a magazine and almost an institution here in the United States, the National Geographic. And they got in touch with you. And why don't you tell that story? Yes, that's an interesting, I always say. We, you can bring up the next image, by the way. Yeah, because I remember uh, this morning I get a phone call. They say, oh, we are a National Geographic. Do you know the magazine? I said, yes, I know. And uh, he, they said, do you like to do some uh, Chinese history painting for us? I said, oh, definitely. But uh, how you know me? That's why they told me the story. They read the magazine. They like my style, like my uh, uh, the, uh, the, yeah, technique. And they hired me to do a series, like a six, uh, in uh, three years, I did the six a different uh, uh, sub uh, dynasty for the National Geographic. Even they sent me to, uh, give me the passport, uh, send me to the, the Terracotta soldier in, in Xi'an. And this thing is, uh, I was uh, retouched the painting and they put them a photo on their magazine. Yeah, very interesting. That's, they never did that for the painter. On the yeah. Well, and it and um, the the idea, and I I think I'm think is speaking really from the viewpoint of the publication. I think they had in mind that you might do some illustrations for them, mm -hmm. but um, Hun Yen, you have a way of thinking on a larger scale, a deeper uh, a deeper way, mm -hmm. and uh, you produce these six really monumental paintings. Um, do we have one of them? Is it coming up next? Yeah, see, like this scene. Yeah, I, I for me, it's a very dramatic moment in the history, and I put a lot of feeling in there. I said, you know, I just want to do a bigger one. So I, I stretched a bigger uh, canvas. I did those painting, and everyone, uh, I think, is uh, given my opportunity to do those kind of history painting, monumental uh, scale. And uh, very good, you know, what surprised me, they're not uh, using my image for the magazine. They bought uh, all of my paintings. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> that I makes think sense. I want to emphasize that. <laughs> In other words, and, and it's very important, I think, yeah. your large scale paintings that were inspired by those uh, uh, desire for illustrations really turned into these six monumental paintings that the grand that, that the National Geographic Society actually purchased for their permanent collection. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah, it's in their collection in their museum. Yeah. That's that's wonderful. Let's go to the next image. Hmm. That's the silk, the silk Road is important on so many levels. Hon Yen, why don't you? Explain your um, your objective or your inspiration for this Silk Road painting. Yeah, you know that's a uh, uh, long before uh, later turned to very political uh, issue the Silk Road because uh, I did this like uh, ten years ago, and uh, but uh, start very interesting. I did this uh, smaller illustration for uh, educational uh, textbook. But after I enjoyed the competition, as again, I said, let me do a big one. So I did this one. That's when now turned to very important pieces uh, in the literature world. And I get us, uh, always get some money from Europe. They ask me uh, permission uh, to get them and put on their magazine, put on their article, put on their book. And of course, Silk Road is important in not only historically, but you know, I, I believe the uh, Chinese government is using it as a, uh, I, don't, I don't even know what to call it, a motif for their future. So it's a significant painting on many levels. Yeah. Let's go to the next image. Yeah. This is called uh, uh, the Halloween night, great. 
this uh, another you know, you can see Halloween in uh, pray in Woodstock is always a fun, but for me I think it's such an opportunity to show the big idea, big thing about the American people. Why I always explain, and uh, for for a long time Chinese people don't understand why they have those kind of holiday. I say actually the American people is very creative, and those day is their day to show their idea, unique style, and also their sense of humor. You know, they, they go out to show something ugliness and give you, give you a feeling that they're actually very, very free and very happy people. That's why I make the big thing for that. It's great. And, you've, and you have made a point of concentrating on American life, uh, almost the way you've uh, concentrated on the Tibetan people. Uh, this is a remarkable painting and something that I hope all Woodstockers are able to see, if not in, uh, where is this painting, Huyen? Uh, that painting in a collector in Woodstock. Oh, that's great. So the, the painting is in town and the image is just so iconic and we all, all love uh, the painting and, of course, our tradition here in Woodstock. Um, but speaking of tradition, um, we also had a little bit of a journey together. A friend of mine from high school, by the way, uh, back in South Bend, Indiana, uh, was the public relations director of the Plymouth Plantation uh, in, in Massachusetts. And um, Hun Yen was introduced to Plymouth Plantation as a unique place where um, what American tradition is, is almost recreated on a, on, on a daily basis. So it had an, a particularly strong influence on Hon Yen's um, psyche, let's say, and uh, began a series of paintings that you did of Salem and the Pilgrims. Let's show a, a painting from that series. Yeah. Uh, the Pilgrim is an important uh, uh, history uh, in America, and uh, but uh, more is uh, related with me because I am an immigration uh, new generation. Yeah, the, like uh, 300 years apart, but we're on the same kind of boat. We're here facing the new world and we get help to settle. This is the first uh, Thanksgiving dinner I did that painting because I want uh, again for that kind of thing to show the greatness yeah, of the thing. It's a great, great painting. And um, you know, was one of the model in the painting. <laughs> I was <laughs> going to say I was honored. Uh, if you uh, see not, the, not the end of the table, you have the head. And <laughs> the <laughs> you remember? Yeah. Yes, look, look for the bearded man with the uh, orange <laughs> hat. Uh, that is me. <laughs> That is I. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Hun Yen, you did a whole series of paintings um, uh, in, in, um, uh, of the pilgrims, and uh, they were very, very important. I think, is this the only one that we have for this, uh, this series? Maybe, because we okay. cut uh, most of the photo up. You, okay. you look, maybe I have one more. One more. Let's, let's move to, no, oh. No. no. Okay, so we, 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 we take this off. We just uh, give you an idea. Lois and I we married, getting together, and we working together. Also, write a book called the Yin Yang of Painting. And that book uh, really popular, and uh, they had uh, twenty copy, uh, twenty thousand uh, copies, and uh, immediately sold in one year. And uh, now you you can have, and you know. You can get uh, some uh, uh, copy. They sell very high price because they started from that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good su uh, shopping <laughs> suggestion. But I, so I just want to point out if if the viewers can't see it, the title is the Yin and Yang of painting, yeah. which yeah. seems particularly appropriate, I would say. Oh, there we go. This is the book, and uh, here, yeah. and one also, more, one more plug for the. Another book here. 
It's a ah. in China. It's a huge book. Yeah. And uh, this, uh, it's all my painting. Yeah. Oh, but, um, yeah. And that's a major, major publication. Yeah. And, uh, it's a very I, I believe, I believe yeah. copies of that are available through your studio or the James Cox Gallery, if anyone's <laughs> interested. <laughs> Being very commercial and moving on a little bit, uh, yeah. I want to say that, you know, Hun Yin's connection to China uh, is, is a very deep one. And uh, he has spent a lot of time back and forth between the United States and China, doing some amazing work and exhibitions and even teaching there. And I guess uh, you have a, 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 a group photograph here. Hun Yin, why don't you just explain the, the various aspects of this, uh, this four piece grouping? Okay. This, uh, yeah, during the time I'm in Ustaka, I spent another four years, uh, even Lois always say maybe five years, uh, teaching and uh, did uh, some commission there. So teaching is uh, because uh, there I follow the semester. So I fly from Ustaka to Shanghai every year four times to teach the university students. And that's cool. You see there exhibition space, huge. There may be, I can say, the biggest art school in the world. And the Shua is very young, only six years old by, by that time. Now it's a, uh, 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 yeah, 10 years old. So this is why uh, they really want me to go there because they need some older teacher, you know, uh, look better. And the, on the left is the commission I did for uh, China, uh, the Chinese Museum and the competition, uh, what they call it? Uh, anyway, yeah. yeah. You, you want to see next is the two big painting, very big. Yeah. Next one. Okay, next image, yeah. And I hope, Onion, I don't know, you uh, check your sound, your connection on your sound. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's good now, go yeah, ahead. Okay. That's uh, another history subject uh, for uh, big uh, hero in history. Uh, he basically, basically by himself opened the Silk Road because uh, he visited all the two countries and uh, he did a political mission and uh, he learned a lot of things referred back to China. So his name is Zhang Qian, same last name with me. So that's the picture about the he is on the market. And the city is today's in Afghan, uh, summer city, what the name was? In the... Back tree. Northern Af Afghanistan. That's the... Yeah, I want to go there and research. The Lord said, no, you're not going there. So. <laughs> <laughs> a little insight into the uh, nuances of the Hun Yen and Lois show. Okay, um, the, the Silk Road, of course, is an extremely important event in mankind, the history of mankind. And uh, we can't talk about uh, the Silk Road without mentioning an extremely important Western uh, figure uh, Marco Polo. And Hon Yen, you've commemorated uh, this great man in a painting and I'd like to show it now. Yeah. And uh, so the you Marco Polo, I did the commemoration. There you Yeah. It's uh, interesting because uh, those are the uh, Chinese museums, they want to have a, a lot of Chinese history painting done. But uh, I'm so glad that even after I leave China, over 30 years, they still remember me. So they asked me to do some painting for them. For them. I said, what is the subject? They said, Marco Polo. I said, oh, oh, sure, I want to do it. I think uh, Marco Polo and I are similar, right? He lived his uh, Venus and they come to China. He saw the uh, canal, he the bridge. And uh, he kind of like a feel uh, uh, like a deja vu. And uh, me too. 
I come to America. It's from China. When I was a child, my father educated in China. We had a lot of pictures at home uh, in, in America. My father spent 10 years in America. So sure, he had a lot of photos. When I watched that photo, read the book, sorry, and I want to come to America when I was a child. Yeah. Yeah, uh, honey, and I think it's important to, to emphasize that your, your, your father was a professor and he taught at a university on the West Coast, as I remember, in the 1960s, 50s? No, no, 1920s. 1920s, excuse me, I'm yeah, sorry. Yes, yeah. in the 1920s. So you had a connection emotionally, historically to the United States long before you came here. Yeah, even 1949. And uh, during the Civil War, and uh, he wanted to take the whole family uh, to America. And uh, we miss the boat with Shanghai. You know, miss the boat. Yeah, because they're fighting on the street. Yeah. yeah. So we miss the boat. Yeah. Well, it brings us back to the United States and uh, your chosen home and uh, this kind of subjects that you've been concentrating on, not only here in Woodstock, but in New York City and uh, areas around. And you did this remarkable painting uh, not that many years ago uh, on the steps of the great uh, New York City Library. And uh, maybe you'd like to explain uh, your, your interest in, in this subject. Yeah, it's a, first of all for me is I love the great sea because it's the opportunity you see all different kinds of people. For me, art is a, uh, another point, my art uh, like a novel, you know, a lot of different characters, different uh, plot, and also like a symphony. The symphony is a so big band and with a lot of instruments together. This is why the painting is a fit into my art form. Also, for me, it's uh, the freedom. You know, when you see a singer singing on the street, really seeing from their heart and the people and the looking or listening and they're in their own world, but also you, you can feel they're individually, but the harmony. So this would make me feel this interesting thing to do, yeah. Well, and it's actually quite typical of the scene that you, that you uh, can come upon on these steps. I've seen it many, many times and I'm happy that we're back in New York City yeah. and, and New York State at the moment. And if you yeah. uh, don't mind, I can see that we've come upon a, an hour or a time in this that's actually uh, fairly punctual. If there are questions, and I'm not sure how this all works in your, your, your Zoom system, but if there are questions, um, why don't we see why don't we take a question or two? I have to see the question. Uh, I don't know how to do that. Push what? Go ahead. Look at chat. Okay. Lois, do I do something? Okay, I guess we do have some questions. Uh, how can we obtain the book that I think was discussed? And I'm, uh, there are, imagine, we, there are two books that we've uh, talked about. Um, Hun Yen, would you like to explain where they can get the, your two books? And uh, I think that uh, uh, Yin Yang of a painting, you, you can go to the Amazon.com and uh, okay. you, you may find that their price is high, but maybe there's a decent price. Okay, uh, Amazon.com for the Yin and Yang of, of painting. That's yeah, you can <laughs> either my name, Lois' name, or the uh, title of the book. You can find okay. the information. Yeah. The Yin and Yang of painting, right. And, and for the large, for the large, actually monumental book, I hmm. think that they can either get in touch with you or here at the gallery, you James. Know, maybe, yeah. maybe touch with you. You know, I just That's give you an idea. The book is a really well done book, and the, all the colored, yeah, colored image, yeah, it's good, yeah, and the well done book. <laughs> Uh, uh, Lois, do, do we have the information? Oh, okay. Contact with us 
Yeah. Go to the website. Yeah, our website. Or Jim Cox's website. And Jim's, uh, Jim's, uh, Jim Scott's uh, uh, gallery website. Yeah. Okay, we're open for questions. I'm not sure. I'm getting a uh, few short questions coming in in, in chat. And uh, we'll be happy to answer any, any questions people have. There was an uh, earlier question, Jim. Somebody I, wanted to know, when he was traveling in Tibet, did he work from images or photographs, or was that all from memory? Uh, I have a sketch, and I have a photo. And, uh, but uh, because uh, a lot of time I was uh, really is on the bus, so I didn't really have a time to have an oil painting there. Yeah. And I see a question here. Are there other Woodstock theme paintings that he's done? Such an amazing presentation. That's so nice to hear. Thank you. But Thank the you. answer is yes, there are other uh, Woodstock theme paintings. Yeah. But yeah, I have the uh, Woodstock uh, yard sale. And uh, I have the Red of the Spring, the Maple, all Woodstock life. And another interesting painting called uh, the since giving dinner, we had the dinner uh, open for people in the holiday because the busy or money issue cannot have their good food. So, family. yeah, from a family, the organization family. Sure. Uh, have, yeah, that's a very interesting. I, I like to have some time to show the painting because exactly is what I like. You can see the different characters. Uh, in the in the painting, and the people. No, I, I I think to answer this question, Hong Yan, people could get in touch with you directly, or if they want to, because we're easy to reach, they can get in touch with us here at the James Cox Gallery. Yeah, that will be very good. James Cox Gallery, easy to find it is on the road, <laughs> and also he is a very good knowledgeable. He knows me. He knows art history. And that's a good way to contact with him. And I see here is a question. Are your works scheduled for a tour? And are there any shows in Colorado? Colorado. Well, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to answer for you, Han Yan. <laughs> with the right invitation, there might be. <laughs> <laughs> good, because uh, I, my uh, daughter and uh, son-in-law living in uh, of Colorado. And the Lois love to go with me. Yes, it's yes. We have you have family out there. Here's another question. They've studied your artwork in 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 art school. They were inspired. Uh, oh, it just went away. They were inspired by you as a Chinese immigrant, and they give you a gracious thank you. Thank you. Uh, there's thank someone you. who says I enjoyed the show. Amazing artist, and I believe these are very very important or large. Yes. Art As Jim said, monumental. Yeah. Put that way, art for me is a very important thing. Yeah. Sure. I like. So yeah. here is a question. Does he have any exhibitions coming up and where? Jim and I, the gallery. Oh, excuse me? <laughs> uh, no. Also, I will have a museum show in springtime. Where is that? Yeah, Lloyd. The art museum. No January library. A lot of difficult words for me to pronounce it, but that's the way the show was uh, uh, arranged for this summer, but because of the disease oh. uh, COVID, we moved and moved and moved, moved to next year in March. Yeah, that's yes. and, and let me just clarify, at the Arkell Museum. Arkell Museum and Kanoja yes. Harry Library. And the show is scheduled for the month of March. Very good. We all look forward to that. I would like to uh, take this opportunity to thank Hang Yang Zhang and his interviewer, James Cox. I'd also like to thank the Birdcliffe Exhibition Director, Carlin Benson, and our Zoom operator, Judy Kerman, as well as our forum committee members. And thank you all for joining us today. Let me mention that if you would like to support Birdcliff in these endeavors, 
uh, just visit the website at woodstockguild.org and click on the donate button. Very simple. Join us Monday, November 30th at 5 p.m. when the book talk will feature Bethany Saltman, author of Strange Situation, A Mother's Journey into the Science of Attachment. She will be interviewed by Lisa Phillips, author of Unrequited, The Thinking Woman's Guide to Romantic Obsession. That's not to be missed. Thank you, Hong Yen. Thank you, Jim. And thank you all for being with us today. My pleasure. And I think we're done. Okay, great. Thank you. Here's our red button.